know if it works. Uh, hold on. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me over the music? It's weird, there shouldn't be any delay. Hey everyone, uh, I'm just setting up a few things, so just give me a moment and I'll get going. Sorry to hear that you have to leave straight away. I'll I'll definitely stream more. So this time it's it's my first time trying it out on YouTube. Um, if it goes well, I'm definitely gonna try it out a lot more in the future. So even if you can't make it this session, maybe next one. Just gonna start in a moment. Just setting up a few things. Hey everyone, so glad so many joined so fast. Um, so um, before I start, if you happen to be wa watched my stream on Twitch before, uh, let me know how your experience is when I do it on YouTube. It's first time trying it out. So if you checked it out on Twitch, uh, and just let me know how you feel about it. Um, and if you're new to the stream, welcome and I hope you enjoy, hope you enjoy it. Uh, so let 
me just move some stuff around. It's actually someone in last streaming session who said like, hey, why, why don't you just stream on YouTube? And I was like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to try it out. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Like, I get the feeling that, um, like, just by customizing and setting up my stream up, it, it felt like uh, YouTube just had so much more options and it felt pretty straightforward. Uh, and it's also even just in beta stage, but it feels pretty good, at least from a first impression. So, um,. Uh, before we start, just to give a bit of context for the painting, uh, so I'm um, this year I want to make uh, basically season one of Path of Miranda on YouTube. It's going to be like an animated show, um, and what I'm doing now is like something I've never done this before. So I'm going to be experimenting my way forward, but I want to create some background plates, uh, and I hope to launch first episode, the prologue, maybe towards end of February. So we're going to try it out and just see how it goes. Uh, let me actually show you what I have so far. Uh, so it's super rough, but uh, let me just show you guys. Uh, all right, so this is by no means final animation. Uh, it's just kind of what I have now and I'm going to adjust it and it's still not, the prologue is still not even done. But just give you guys a bit of feel. And I'm going to show you the frame I kind of want to work on and paint that background plate for. Uh, so let's just start it straight away. It's just super simplistic. Yeah, this is just the uh, storyboarding. That's where I'm at so far with this. Uh, and the frame that I want to work on, or the sequence I want to work on, uh, this background painting, it's basically going to be this one where you kind of zoom down. Uh, so it's basically this sequence uh, that I want to do now. Uh, and I just want to paint the background first just to get a solid base. And I'll do the animation later on. Uh, again, I have no experience in animation whatsoever. But it's just going to be a lot of trial and error. So let's just, let's just dive into the painting. Uh, yeah, it's done in Photoshop. Um, it's, it's not meant to be a mood painting. It's meant to be like a, kind of like a final painting I can actually use in the animation. Uh, I'm going to, to try and see like I tried the last weekend I was streaming. Uh, some painting as well where I try to paint a background in the style that I kind of was looking for so the goal is to see you know can I replicate it now and is it what I want so and if it ends up on a note where I'm uh, excited about it, I'm probably gonna use it probably test out some animation with this frame and try to see how well it matches the storyboard and like you know do, do I like the direction where it's going so it's gonna be a lot of <laughs> a lot of trial and error, but um, so since this is like a longer frame, it's gonna start from up here and pan all the way down. Uh, it's gonna be quite a vertical shot. So I just wanna, I just wanna clean up some of the lines before I start painting, just so I have a more clear idea of what I wanna go for in this image. Uh, and it's not meant to be like uh, super uh, super tight lines, just. Just, oh, I need to scale this up. This is way too small. Uh, just enough information so I know uh, what to push on or how, how to paint it up. Uh, 
Uh, I'm from Sweden. I was born in Iran, but I lived al almost all my life in Sweden. Um, and then I moved to England, then back to Sweden, then to Croatia, and now in LA. So, <laughs> kind of like all over the place. And we're gonna stay in LA for uh, three years at least. At least that's where our visa is. And after that, uh, we might we might renew it and stay more. Uh, it really depends on how work is and everything. LA is great though. Like you have, you whatever you imagine, you you find it in LA. Like uh, we went like before Christmas to something called Cat Cafe, which was pretty damn awesome. <laughs> uh, so it it's a very very cool city. You can find whatever, whatever you might be into. You, I'm sure you'll find it too. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll save the recorded process for this one, um, since it, I don't know if I can finish the painting in one session, uh, but I'm definitely going to stream more regularly, so, you know, can just tune in another time as well and just catch up on whatever you missed on. Um, this, this brush, it's like an ink brush. Um, or it's it's actually a tool preset that Yama Yubra, I hope I didn't butcher his name. He he posted it a long time ago. It's like a bunch of tool presets. Um, I don't know. I, I just like the feel of this one. It kind of feels uh, kind of feels less like Photoshop and more like a bit of traditional feel to it, which is pretty sweet. Where's Kentucky? Uh, I'm not that good on LA, uh, not LA, <laughs> United States, uh, the state's geography. Is that like more central part of the country or? Um, I'm working on a I showed it a bit earlier, Malcolm, but it's basically like going to be a, a background plate for uh, the animation I want to make this year. Uh, I'm trying to focus purely on the prologue uh, this month and try to answer as many questions and try stuff out uh, so I can, you know, go into full production with it uh, or start producing it as a one man army, basically. <laughs> I have, a, I have a, someone I know who might help with the animation stuff. Uh, like. You know, in 3D, like cutting out parts and having them move a bit. So uh, that would be incredible. We're gonna do a test first, probably with this image, uh, and from there we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm not trying to really like focus on what type of detail we have here or here or even on the side. I just want to get like the general shapes, you know, like how does this part separate out from this part and this part, how does that separate out from this part? So just kind of like blocking in like silhouette uh, before, before anything. Uh, and since I'm going to paint it, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to add that much detail to the drawing. It's just trying to answer a few questions before I start. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's like, it really depends, like sometimes when I do line work, uh, I use it sometimes to just, for instance, in this case, since it's a big scene, um, I would just think of silhouette rather than actual detail, versus if I'm painting something much closer to the camera, like uh, the camera's very close and maybe it's a close-up interior, that's when I'd focus more on actual detail. Uh, but since it's just a big shot, uh, I'm just going to try and capture general shapes uh, just to provide myself with a bit of extra information before I, I dive deeper into it. But that's cool Malcolm, if you, I, I see there's so many people making their own projects and there's like so many awesome ideas. It's just, it's just really, really nice to see. And it just inspires everyone to like push on their own thing. Something I also like doing is um, when I have a drawing underneath, I like to I like to switch the color of the line work so I don't get confused what I'm actually drawing, just so it'll pop out a bit better uh, for me. Because when I have black and red, it makes it easier to see what additional changes I'm doing versus if I'm painting black on black. It's pretty hard to make your personal project like I don't know how long I think I started this project uh, probably when I started drawing as well um, I did not have a lot of like uh, technical skill and like there was a lot of like fundamental issues I had as an artist um, which made it even harder but like I think it's important to keep 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 that idea you know even even if the drawing doesn't turn out the way you want it you know at least push on it and save those ideas because you never know what you can turn that into um, I said this in the past and like Pastor Miranda before was really dark and like the the penguin now was actually a dragon attached to Miranda's shoulder um, so you know the, <laughs> the project has changed like a lot but um, you know it keeps developing as you keep developing as an artist and you know your interests and stuff like that so even if you feel like you can't do the art that you want, just, just keep sketching for it. Maybe one day it'll become what you want. Hey Gabby, so, so, sorry. <laughs> well, you still, can still enjoy the stream, I hope, even though you finished the painting. actually share some of the the older art I have for that if I can find it somewhere
if you feel like you have a lot of projects, you know, just just keep exploring them, you know. Maybe neither of them will actually be what you really want. And, you know, maybe there's like an additional option which you haven't tried that, tried yet. Uh, or maybe by exploring the projects, you might feel like there's one of them which you really love to work on. And the other ones are kind of like, you just kind of like, but one you really love. Uh, I would just say, you know, keep exploring, you know. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm personally, I'm going to try this one year. Kind of like an experiment where I'm going to go at this project like, 200 percent and really try to try to make something with it you know and after that one year uh, i'm kind of gonna pull back and look at it like is this something i really like you know do i want to keep keep building on this world and keep it pushing it uh or do i feel like you know i'm, I'm not that excited about it i want to try something new um but i'm for now i'm pretty excited about it <laughs> so uh, definitely gonna keep pushing on it Yeah, just, just keep drawing, Alyssa, you know. Uh, just because you can make the art that you want, that doesn't mean you have good ideas. Because uh, the more you improve as an artist, you can always go back to those things, you know. Just make it visually more easier for, for you to understand and stuff like that. just pull up the chat a bit uh, I think I missed something uh, Andy for the brush it's uh, Yama Ubrev I think that's how you say it if you just Facebook uh, if you just go and type in Jama um, you should be able to find him on Facebook and from there you can navigate to his sites or just copy paste his name and to Google. Yeah, that's the one. Lawrence got it. Got any tips in mind when trying to get a nice variety of color while keeping everything harmonized? It's super hard, especially on overcast paintings. Um, I agree. Like, I think just looking at reality, looking at, you know, some reference and stuff like that can really help you discover those subtle differences because um, sometimes it's the most subtle differences that i notice you know that really makes or break the kind of the light or the colors uh, just got to be observant on those and painting from life is like the the best advice i think i can give um, i do it now with my coworkers. we do it every day uh, we have like 50 minutes every day. We just go out uh, and just do gouache, you know, even though it goes terrible for me most of the time <laughs> it, It's still a very rewarding exercise I might do one day like a streaming of gouache or something like that Let's pull these higher up Hey, at the end, advice for studying in art school. I'm I'm at ACCD right now, and I want to make the most out of my education. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I never went to art school, so I can't really advise you. The one thing I would just say is like try to try to make the most of it. You know, since you're probably already paying tuition, you know, just make sure that you know when you get homeworks, just just go all out on it and try your very best. You know, it doesn't matter what the homework assignment. You just try to make it the absolute best. Best, uh, best, best assignment that you can. Best homework. Uh, that's that's the ba best advice I can give on that. Uh, since I never went to school, I don't know. Like, uh, 
other than that but just just try your best um, and try to make the most of your time in school and just avoid procrastination if you can because it'll, it'll just devour up a lot of time Do you have any? Do you have some advice, or, uh, some tips on mastering perspective, and come up with backgrounds? Um, I think like by mastering perspective, if you mean like being able to paint really well with fisheye lens, uh, I can't do that. I'm trying to learn that, but I can't do that. But <laughs> drawing with like you know three point perspective and stuff like that, um, I think you know just. For me, I, I bought this tutorial uh, off of an old site uh, called the Art Department. Uh, and I just kept watching it, kept watching it, trying it, did not understand anything, watched it again and kept trying uh, until eventually I was like, oh, I kind of get it. <laughs> and then just keep keep using it in your own work, you know. Um, so it's like for me, when when I need when I want to learn something, I have to. I have to, you know, you, you digest something, like you read a tutorial or you watch a tutorial, and then you try to use it in some for shape or form in your own work. Um, for me, that's a very, very good way to, to, to make use of the information. Um, it doesn't matter what it is uh, studying, like that's, that's how I like to approach it. And for, for um, painting environments, a kind of mistake I... Um, not a mistake, but like when you think about city scenes or like more more humans, human organic stuff, or not not organic, but more more man-made things. Um, I always used to paint like you know a city scene, you know perfect perspective, perfect grid, uh, which kind of works. But in reality, when you think about it, or you look at a city scene or urban scene, like. Not everything is following the same perspective, you know, some buildings are on a slightly slanted ground plane, some are a bit higher up, some are built, you know, with a tilt. Uh, so ha following a perfect perspective grid, I notice sometimes make a city scene feel less, less real. Uh, so not following a perspective grid 100% and, you know, pushing some stuff off of it, I think could help add to that. If that helps uh, with painting environments. Let's see, I'm going to have the road coming here, um, kind of push it up as well. Uh, the tutorial, I, I don't have it anymore. It, I bought it from, I think Carl Dobsky did the tutorial, um, but the website shut down for, uh, th there was some drama, uh, and the, it was basically like a school who was running it, and they closed and they removed all the tutorials, uh, I don't think you can buy them anywhere anymore, uh, there was a lot of good ones, I might have them on my old computer, I'm not sure. I think any tutorial on uh, perspective could help. Hey Theo.
Hey Ati, when you were self-teaching, did you pay any mind to time spent on each painting slash sketch or were you only trying to make each piece the best they were? Um, I think time management is pretty important. Uh, but you know, when you're really trying to learn something, um, it, it's important to just focus on trying to make the best of it. But for instance, say you're doing a study. Uh, I think it's very, especially with studies, I know this for myself, it's very easy to like just just gets caught on like tiny details that really doesn't matter you know like at the edge of the canvas you just start noodling on something um, you think in particular when doing studies to put a timer uh, say you have one hour to paint this uh, still life then you're gonna think like okay by the end of it I have to be finished what is super important that I capture early on to that's really gonna sell the study what is that makes the study pop out to me uh, so I think with doing studies, it's very good to have a timer uh, to not get caught up into tiny details because uh, that's just happened so many times to me. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going to just study and then you just end up noodling on something that is like not the reason why I started studying uh, the, the image itself. Uh, but when doing personal stuff, I think sometimes you need that time to just take it easy and just try to capture uh, what you want to capture. Do you pre-plan your color scheme or do you do your work from what you know from observation? Uh, it's a bit mixed, you know. Uh, sometimes I have a reference of a color scheme I like. Sometimes I know from my head a kind of color palette which I like to use. Um, and other times I have no clue <laughs> what I'm doing. So I'm just trying out and hoping for the best. Uh, but it, it tends to help if uh, you think... What do you want to communicate? You know, what what type of story or, or mood do you want to sell? Uh, and based on that, you know, say, say as the general premises for your painting is, uh, you want the viewer to feel sad. You know, instantly when you think about that, it's already going to start to formulate some color palettes that are going to work for that, and some certain light setups. Uh, and the more you paint, the more you observe things, the more you're going to. Uh, notice that certain things really help sell that type of mood across so just by knowing what narrative you're going for it's already going to help you with your color scheme Let me just uh, let me just copy paste this thing into Arch so I see how close I am to the original. I think I have a general layout with this. Uh, 
Thanks, Butai Haki. <laughs> I'm glad you like the, the colors. Um, Joshi Hernandez, I would love to see more portrait painting. I love the few ones. The love the few ones you have. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm definitely. Um, that's definitely something I want to dive into more seriously. Um, so, you can expect some more of those uh, in time. Putting some scale reference for where I want the people, or how big they are, you know. Uh, how, how small is the furthest one in the scene going to look like compared to those uh, closest to the camera? Um, and it's just, doesn't have to be a person, it's just really like uh, scale wise. I think something like this is okay. Um, so I think we can start painting soon. There's just a few landmarks I want to get done before I uh, get into it. Thanks, Iris. I really appreciate it. You've been creating some incredible paintings as well. It's just whenever I see your stuff, you just you just smile, uh, which is just a really nice feeling uh, you have in your work. So have a good have a good night. Uh, how long will you stream? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this painting, but definitely for a few hours. I'm standing and painting, so uh, basically until I <laughs> until I can't stand and paint anymore, I think, or until I need to take a break. Hey, did you go for any tight line drawing or just an indication? How do you know to get rid of the lines when painting? Um, well, for me, it, it depends really. I mentioned earlier, it depends on how big the scene is. Uh, you know, if the, if the camera is pretty close to what's actually happening, uh, you know, the shot is very close, then I'll definitely take the time to do a drawing. Um, Versus like when it's something that's much bigger, um, I try to just focus like general shapes because I'm, I end up painting a lot of things and I can suggest them. Um, and nothing needs to be super detailed because it's so, so big. Um, so it really depends on the subject matter and kind of how you prefer to work. For me, if I were to do uh, a tight drawing for a scene that's very big, in many cases, I end up it just ends up making the painting look very dead and stiff, uh, which is something I, I, I don't want. Because I think sometimes when you do when you do have a tight drawing, it's very easy that uh, you kind of suck the life out of the painting somehow. I'm I'm not sure still how to get around that, uh, especially with bigger scenes, but. I think we can start blocking in some uh, some rough colors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna normally I paint things pretty flat, but since I want to animate this stuff, uh, I'm going to we're gonna try I'm gonna try to keep it separated, uh, but don't be surprised if I end up just flattening everything and making it harder for myself later. <laughs> uh, so. So let, let me talk about the light setup before I even actually start painting. Um, let me, uh, let's go with grayscale. Let's put it to multiply. Let's turn off pen pressure. Uh, so this is something I, I like doing is, you know, before I even start painting, I, I try to think, what is the light situation that I want? Um, and to be able to experiment with that, it's just going to make your life that much easier as an artist. Uh, it's just going to give you freedom to explore a lot of different ideas before you fully commit to something. Uh, it doesn't have to be super tight, it's just to provide you with enough information uh, of what you want for later on. So, let's just 
lock in some stuff. So the general thought I have is that I want uh, basically, you know, all of this part to be very bright. Uh, and we're going to have sunlight hitting the very edge of the building uh, and the rest of this area. Oh, did I grab the right? It's going to be in shadow. So that is just, let me delete that. That's just the general idea I have. Uh, and experimenting, you know, with this early on, like if I feel like, oh, okay, this, this really sucks, I can just like delete and start over uh, without having wasted any time on like, painting in the light and then you feel like oh man this is terrible and I don't want to repaint it <laughs> so trying it out early is just gonna make your life easier so I think something like that uh, this lamp is gonna be darker as well Uh, what's your inspiration for your project? Um, I I don't know the exact thing because like it like I said it's been it's been in development for a while but it's changed a lot so it's just just a lot of things that inspired me you know it's partially inspired by uh, things I have experienced and uh, inspired by things that I love you know like movies uh, paintings characters uh, I even you know as as <laughs> As the project develop and you know you encounter people in real life uh, sometimes you encounter people who are very unique and that's people I want to use in the project you know like just capture that personality uh, which is also like an inspiration so it's just just a mixture of everything you know growing as an artist and experiencing life uh, we'll see Ho hopefully it'll be not a bad <laughs> direction uh, but we'll see so I think this is basically what I want for lighting you know this part that's in the shadow it's not going to be very dark uh, but a general premise is I want to go with this light source um, and I kind of knew this a bit ahead of time so uh, it's not a lot of guesswork here but this is great you know if you have a drawing you just want to try stuff out I would definitely give it a shot so let's just start by blocking in some of the some of the sky. I can actually push in across the whole thing a bit of yellow. So I want to try and get some. Uh, very rough colors. Uh, oops. Actually, let me get the whole thing on a selection before I start. It just make it easier to rough up things. If you have any questions or thoughts, just let me know. I'll try my best to answer. Well, while trying to paint. So for the animation itself, um, I think I want this part in the background to move on its own. Uh, 
maybe keep these buildings separated out. Um, I think that should be enough because if you look at the animation itself, um, where is it? It's basically just like panning down. So I think that should that should be fine. Hey, I'm and Eliza and Amy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's live. Uh, first time trying it on YouTube, but it's definitely live. Malcolm, thanks for joining in, um, and I'll see you maybe later. Yeah, I, I might be here in two hours. Uh, have a good one, dude. Hey, Cecilia Silva. Yeah, so um, this year I want to make my own animated show. Uh, it's going to be very simplistic because I'm a uh, just one person doing it I'm, I might get a bit of help with some of the camera animation but so I want to make uh, my personal project into an animated show this year that that is the goal and just try, just try for a full year and see see where it goes you know do I still feel excited about it after a year and want to keep developing on it because uh, I've planned out at least three seasons. Um, but I want to focus on just first season, the first year. And we'll see what happens after that. It's also very hard to, to try to do this while working. So I'm just going to try to make the most of it. The free time I have. So just want to get this on a selection because uh, it's just going to make things slightly easier because uh, I don't want to paint on this guy. I want to keep it separate. Just getting a simple silhouette will make it a bit easier. Let me just go grab some water. My throat's getting a bit dry. I'll be back in a moment. Um, <clears throat> just want to introduce some different hue to the sky. The blue. Maybe a bit warmer red towards the bottom. Or let's go orange. So I'm thinking it's like a sunny day as well. Um, sunny, sunny winter day. and some of the colors so I'm, I'm gonna basically paint pretty much the whole thing with hard round and just again it's a, it's an experiment I tried last time 
uh, and I kind of liked the look it gave the image. Um, so it's just gonna keep keep experimenting with that and just see how it goes. Uh, as you can see, I'm not really. It doesn't really matter if you paint, you know, across the drawing. Even though I just want it to be this part, it's fine for now. Just blocking in things quickly. <coughs> right how how dark do I want it to be in the foreground compared to the background Now I'm just using a bit of lasso because I want to get this uh, just a bit of cleaner separation there. Can you explain a little bit about the story? Uh, or do you stream on Twitch? Um, I used to stream on Twitch, or I, I do stream on Twitch um, from time to time. Uh, however, I wanted to try out YouTube today. Uh, and based on how I feel, uh, you know, the experiences for you, for you as a viewer and for me, I might switch over. I, I'm not sure yet. I'm just trying to see, you know, the, the benefit of the two and from like from a streaming point of view I feel like I have more options to customize things the way I want uh, which is great so but you know it's just a test but um, I think I might switch over we'll see could you explain a little bit about the story um I want to I want to release like the first episode and have that fill in on everything because there's a few things I'm not fully locked down on and I don't want to give uh, a bit of a wrong impression but hopefully it'll be out soon and it'll be explained to you and hopefully you'll enjoy it you know uh, so Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, uh, Satin. Um, have you? Yeah, that's that's actually a good point. That the quality gets better on uh, uh, on YouTube, and it's just a beta stage, and it's still pretty good. So, pretty excited for to try it out maybe another time.
so this stuff definitely needs to be darker because when I turn this black and white uh, still too messy the values just give this a little layer Sorry if I miss any questions. Uh, just just ask it again if I, if I don't respond. Oh, the animation is called Passive Miranda. Um, let me if let me share some pictures. Um, if you give me a moment. So I've done uh, quite a bit of art for it, uh, and this year I, I really want to push on push on making something with it. Um, the main story follows these two characters, the girl and the penguin, uh, and a corgi. <laughs> but the corgi comes in a bit later into the story. Uh, but I've just been doing a lot of paintings, figuring out like. Uh, what what the story is going to evolve around you know what moments they want in the story and all that stuff um so yeah hopefully uh hopefully it'll be interesting because uh, i feel like you know i, I kind of just been exploring a bunch of ideas uh, and i just want to try and make something with it because i feel i have a good enough base to really push on it uh, we'll see i'm gonna do a post uh Probably sometime during January where I upload all the art I have for it because it's kind of spread out all over all over the place. Uh, uh, so yeah, so hopefully, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Yeah, it's the stuff I post on Instagram. So again, I'm just I'm just still trying to capture like the general palette and stuff, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I feel like again the the light setup I showed in the beginning that's kind of what I'm gonna stick to. So I'm just gonna keep sculpting things out. Yeah, cor corgis are amazing. <laughs> I've been I've been actually pretty torn whether I should. Uh, I'd love. I've been dying to get a dog for such a long time, uh, and I'm torn if I should get a German Shepherd or a corgi. Uh, it's it's still very difficult to try and think of which of the two, because uh, it's also like which lifestyle kind of fits best. So still gonna have to do a lot of thinking. For commit to it, but it's, it's just an amazing dog. You know, when you see when you see one, you just get happy. Uh, there's actually on on my way to work. Uh, sometimes I see there's a, a owner who has a small corgi and he takes it out for a walk. It's like seeing that in the morning. It's just just makes you feel good. You know, <laughs> it's just just an awesome start of the day. Uh, seeing a small corgi walking around. Do 
Do you usually use the selection tools for edge control? Um, yeah, I, I, I use lasso tool, uh, if that's what you mean. Um, sometimes I use that. Um, or actually, I use it quite a bit. Uh, I, I like that tool a lot. Because trying to paint out some of the harder edges is is very difficult if you're just trying to paint it. But the lasso tool just gives uh, great control over it. Still not locking on to any details, I'm just trying to capture like general big shapes uh, before I dive into any, any smaller detail. And I'm not sure I can finish the painting in one sitting today. Uh, I'm just going to try and take it, take it as far as I can. But the, but the general idea, uh, I'm also trying to think about the values that I want. And it's still, it's still too, it's still not clear enough. Uh, but we're gonna get there, but I want beyond this point, if you look at this. Let me just do it like that, just super quick. Yeah, actually, we're gonna get some light, so it's gonna be brighter value here. But basically this part, I want it to be brighter than the rest. So eventually we're gonna get there, uh, but that's kind of what I'm striving for when I'm putting down the colors and the values. One of my old dogs was a Corgi Shepherd, says Ryan. Best dog ever. I have no doubt. Getting a mix of two ama <laughs> amazing dogs. Uh, yeah, that, that's another thing about German Shepherd is like, uh, it needs a lot of exercise. So that's why I'm thinking like, does, does my lifestyle actually fit? Uh, so yeah, I, I've seen pictures of Corgi and German Shepherd mixes, but I think if I go with one or the other, I like a, a more purebred. But we'll see. Uh, uh, why are you using RGB setup for color pick? Uh, normally people use HSB. So I actually used to use a lot of HSB before. Uh, but it was a few friends who recommended me to, to step away from it and use RGB. Because I was complaining that my colors were not working the way I wanted. And they're like, you know, try RGB. And the biggest thing that I noticed is when you use these HSB sliders, for me, it's very easy to end up with very desaturated colors. Like I always end up, you know, it's super easy to just go super saturated. Uh, and that's what I end up doing for a lot of the time. Uh, and you just have to fight back to push in the saturation. But when you use RGB, it's much harder to hit those grays. And you get, I feel like you get much more variety of colors in your image. Uh, and mainly I like that it's forces, forcing me to stay away from uh, getting those, you know, colors that I really don't like. But you see, I keep, sometimes I keep picking just to like get the right color because I still don't know how to, <laughs> how to use it properly. Uh, it's very tricky sometimes to get that exact color or value that you want. Uh, but I definitely recommend check it out. It's a bit painful in the start, but the more you use it, hopefully the the more you'll enjoy it. How long do you think someone should take on a piece, Justin asked? I would say, you know, as long as, take as much time as you need, you know. Uh, the, I'm, someone asked similar earlier, like how long should you spend time on a painting? I think when you're doing a study, 
it's it's good to set up a timer because particularly on studies you can get caught up on things that are not really important uh, but when you do a personal painting you know if you're doing it for yourself uh, and not for an employer just take all the time you need you know just focus on making it uh, reach that quality that you're looking for you know whether you're going for more speed painting or you want to do a super uh, rendered painting or you know just take your time um, when you're doing your own stuff don't don't be rushed or don't get stressed up by having to paint super fast or you know feel like you spend too much time on a painting because when you work for someone uh, that's when you, you know you have to finish it within a set time and when it's done it's done uh, but with your own stuff just take your time And also like for me in this case, uh, since I want to produce a lot of these, I kind of, since I know I have to do a lot of these, I kind of don't want to uh, spend too much time on them because I want to get like a consistent quality across several of these. So I need something that I can realistically repeat over and over. But that's, that's my goal with the, with the painting. Uh, Simo asked, why aren't you streaming on Twitch? I thought I'd try out um, YouTube and see how it goes. Uh, and just see just see how it goes, like how, how you as a viewer experience it and kind of combine with how I feel uh, that it goes. Like from first impression, the interface is really great for a streamer. Uh, it's just so many options and navigation tools. So it's just It's just awesome. Uh, so it's a test you know and we'll see next time what, what I go on that needs to be darker uh, I never tried the lab sliders i think i wanted to try once but it was just confusing me a lot have you uh, would you get a color wheel maybe coolers um so i thought about that um i think i even bought it uh but i i just i'm just used to the standard photoshop ones uh, if anything, I would just like the sliders to be a bit thicker, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty used to it by now, so I don't mind it. So, uh, are these little hue variation based on bouncing light colors, or do you have other rules? Uh, so mainly now, I'm just trying to get a bit of variety in the colors, and I'm also trying to get the values to read. Uh, and I showed this earlier, I kind of want this to be brighter, and the rest to be dark, and it's still not there. Uh, there's still some separation that needs to be done. Um, so, kind of trying to get the values down, and introducing some variety in colors.
So I think I'm gonna just paint it pretty flat for now. In a later stage, I'm just gonna start cutting uh, things out. So when animating, it'll uh, work a bit better. Has it been difficult to transfer from character creation to environment design? Uh, I always been an environment artist, so <laughs> so I never I never was character uh, artist. Uh, I would I'm trying to get more into illustration based work, but uh, as a pure character designer, I just never found that appealing. It's just not my thing. Um, I love illustration and I love uh, environment painting. Uh, but I'm trying to do more illustration as of late. Um, but it's just personal preference. <laughs> what made you work on an animated show? Um, so, for this project, I've been... The original goal is to like make a... Make a motion graphic novel and kind of release that, and that was going to be kind of it, you know. The project is out, it's done. Uh, but I kind of, I kind of didn't like the more I thought about it, and the more maybe that was the reason why I kind of wasn't pushing it uh, into getting into production on that, because I kind of felt like that that was not the right path for me to go with this. Uh, then I started experimenting with creating, creating some YouTube content. Uh, and I, I don't know if you see some of my earlier YouTube videos uh, where I've been trying to introduce a tiny bit of animation. Um, in doing that, I was like, you know, wh why not just make... Why, why make it into a motion graphic novel when you can make an animated show, you know? Sh sure, it's not going to be uh, that great of a quality since you're doing it on your own, but it's still... I still feel like it, it hits more of... Uh, I can communicate things better. Uh, if it's moving, then if it's just still still motion. Um, so I'm still not sure what I'm diving into. Uh, I guess <laughs> it was going to be a lot of uh, mistakes along the way, but I, I personally feel like it, it fits more what I'm what I want to achieve with the project. So I hope that answers the question. So by turning off the line drawing at this stage, it's still it's starting to read a bit. Um, it's still, you know, if you zoom out, like, oh, maybe it's an alley or something. I can kind of tell there's some sort of light going on. Uh, but I still need to keep the drawing on for a bit more. Uh, asked how do you use color palettes uh, you have already someone that you use to use or do you change with every painting um, well for me it's like I you see the swatches I have here um, I used to rely on them a lot more I kind of fallen away from it sometimes I pick a color which I know will work for what I'm trying to paint uh, but generally I just try to think like what is what is the how do I want you to feel as a viewer you know like I want you to be happy or I want you to feel like you know this is the start of something fresh uh, and with that in mind I try to think like hmm, how can I best hit that with colors to provoke that feeling even more you know for instance if I want you to feel happy uh, I'm not gonna use like a bunch of dark blue and purples and reds uh, it could, but it would be more easy if I go with like, you know, you know, maybe sunshine or something like that. So just trying to think of what I want the viewer to feel uh, and what type of uh, story I want to share uh, helps me give some sort of direction. Oftentimes it's all also just trial and error. You know, you start painting and then like, you know what, these colors suck pretty bad <laughs> and it's time to try something else or just can the image and just start over. That that happens a lot. 
to be completely honest. <laughs> Um, do you use Cintiq? Yeah, um, I, I used to use Wacom tablet, but I switched over to Cintiq uh, not too long ago, uh, and I love it. Um, the main reason why I switched, because at work I use Cintiq and I kind of wanted to close the gap between how I work at home and how I work at work. Um, so, so it's not like, you know, whenever you come to work, you have to slightly adjust. And then when you come home, you have to slightly adjust. Uh, it, would, it would just be the same thing, pretty much. Uh, that was like the main reason. Uh, if Path of Miranda works out, would you ever consider moving from video games uh, to TV or something similar. I, I would love to, uh, if if it works out, I would love to like see it as a, you know, maybe get a full team and turn it into, take the, uh, take the story and turn it into a final movie or like a short animated show with a higher quality. Um, that would be incredible. Um, but the goal is more to just share a story I'd like to tell. Uh, and if people like that, that's that's fantastic. You know, that that's kind of it's kind of my goal, just to make sh sure that you know I have fun and you as a viewer that you you enjoy it. You know, um, and if it takes off, that's that's just that's just incredible. But that's kind of that's kind of how I look at it. Thanks, Nana. <laughs> Hopefully, I hope so too. Uh, hey, Ati, do you think you move more into frame by frame animation style once you've gotten used to the process of animation? Um, so, I'm, uh, yeah, I, like the thing is, like, I have no idea how to make an animation, so it's kind of like stumbling through it blind. Um, and I feel like I, I kind of like that aspect of it because, uh, you know, it, it's going to end up different from usual animation. Um, I'm just trying to think like how to frame things. Uh, and just trial and error, because um, I, I remember trying looking at some animation films, uh, or not animation films, I look at a lot of that, I try to look at animation tutorials, um, and, and it was like an old one, and it was just very, there was like no audio, and it was just very hard to follow, um, but we'll see, you know, the more of the, pro I, I would love to bring someone on to help me out with the animation, uh, but it's very hard to find someone. Especially when I don't have, like, if I would have all of the episodes completely storyboarded out, it'd be pretty easy. Um, but there's still too much work that, or questions that I want to answer before I, uh, you know, can, can take someone on that can continue answering the, the same questions. Hey, hey, not super. Uh, was wondering uh, if you went to art school uh, and what your thoughts are on it. Um, so I did not go to art school. I, I wish I did. Uh, I even applied to four art schools, I think, in Sweden, and I just got rejected from all of them. Um, so I wanted to, but I never got the chance. Um, but I think, like, you know, going to an art school and having it's a big benefit, you know, if you can go to a place where someone uh, can help you, you know, when you get stuck, it's like, I don't know what perspective is, I don't know how to solve it, you know, and you have someone to help you out with that, that's amazing, you know, with internet, you get, you get a lot, you can find, you can find a lot of answers to those questions, but it's harder uh, than just asking your teacher, so there's a lot of benefits going to, so I, I just never had the, the option to. But that kind of worked as a motivator for me, like, you know, because I never got the chance. Uh, I was like, 
I don't care. I'm still gonna do it on my own. No matter how how how, how difficult it'll be, I'll 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 try on my own. You know. Uh, I think the main school I was looking was Fengzu school as well. Once I got uh, rejected from all the Swedish art schools, but uh, that was just pricing was just way out of my budget. <laughs> way out of a broke man's budget. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was, it was too, too expensive. Uh, hey, Winter. Uh, I'm curious if you saw uh, if if I saw you in the psycho forum once. I feel like I might have talked to you once, if not all. It's all good, but I did enjoy 365 challenge. You're awesome. Thanks, man. Um, I don't think I saw you in the psycho forum, but I'm pretty certain I commented on some of your, Im your images on DeviantArt. Uh, I think there's one with Chang Li and she's jumping and it's just just looks freaking awesome. Uh, and I check your Instagram regularly, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I comment there as well. Maybe maybe that's where we met. Uh, you can check out Tunki Pantoja on YouTube. I'm, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Uh, let me save that name, actually. Thank you. Sorry for repeating question. D don't worry. I'm, I'm sorry for missing the question. Sometimes I, I look at the painting and I just forget to check the chat. Uh, uh, with developing a color style that merges with cell shading and painting uh, into on to limit my opportunity for jobs uh, I think just just painting the way you want you know paint the style that makes you happy and the way you like describing shape and form uh, and just focus on that like you know it's hard to say ignore jobs because you know we all we all you know we all need to make a living but painting Painting, but what what you love uh, and the stuff that makes you excited is just gonna make the quality of your work that much higher. And when someone's gonna employ you, they're gonna be like, "God damn, I love the style this guy's doing. I have to have him on board," you know. Um, so I'll definitely like just just paint the way you love, you know, and push on the things that gets you excited, not not what you think uh, employers or people want to see. I kind of made that mistake before I was trying to, uh, when I was making my first portfolio, I was like, yeah, I gotta have all this stuff in my portfolio because I think that's what my employer likes. Um, which kind of was the reason why I was always afraid to dive into like animation look. Uh, Cause I always thought, you know, people gonna say, oh man, that's super lame. Look at that guy trying to paint uh, animated looking stuff, <laughs> which is a stupid excuse. <laughs> But, but that's how I felt. <laughs> it's a terrible excuse. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Just just pay what you love. And I'm, I'm sure it'll work out. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you found my stuff through the, um, through my 365 challenge. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the PDF. <laughs> it was pretty hard to keep it up for a year, uh, especially like when I was I was traveling quite a bit and you know getting married and going on holiday and it was just <laughs> it, it was very difficult some days. Uh, I remember one once. Um, oh, I had, I've been invited over to have a demo at a school. Uh, it was like a school though, studying industrial, like uh, just studying to be artists. But I think it was more like industrial design. It was just like you know, just to tell them like what the industry is like, and you kind of inspire them. Uh, so we're traveling to another city, and when I came home, I had to do feedback and everything. I think that day I was working like 25 hours straight, uh, which was very, very tiring. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. But I'm glad you, li <laughs> you liked the book. Uh, 
Hey, hey Mac. Uh, how is YouTube streaming compared to Twitch? I might start streaming again. Um, to be honest, I'm trying it out for the first time. First impression is that I, I love the the options that YouTube gives you like to customize the channel and all that stuff. Which I feel like on Twitch, you know, there's there's only so much you can do with it. Uh, but that's just my impression. Maybe I'm not looking in the right place <laughs> when I'm trying to make my channel. I don't know. duplicate this if you ever like to talk uh, someone about animation a bunch of hours practice animating though I'm not professional I'll definitely keep that in mind you know just if you can just hit me up on DeviantArt or Facebook just so I remember uh, I might I might take you up on that offer <laughs> Is your project your full-time job? No, um, I work at Riot Games as a concept artist. So this is just something I'm I'm trying been trying for a while to do in my free time. Um, it's still a long way off, but just just trying to chip away at it whenever I can. Um, today's Sunday and tomorrow is Martin Luther Day. Uh, I think it's some some holiday here in the states. So I'm just gonna keep painting on this stuff and push it. Push it as far as I can. When it comes to streaming, I never use Picar Picardo. Would YouTube be better? Uh, I heard of Picardo. Uh, I never use that either. I used to use Twitch, or I use Twitch, uh, but I'm trying YouTube. Uh, I would recommend, you know, give a shot at Twitch, and because there's so many people streaming on Twitch. Uh, I don't even know how to find live streams on YouTube. Uh, I just saw that option. Uh, and I think I saw someone else do it uh, somewhere, and I thought, hey, hey, let's just let's just give it a try and <laughs> and see how it goes. Uh, but first impression is it's good, uh, and I've heard some people say in the chat also that the quality is better than Twitch. Um, I'm not sure if I just not hit the right settings on Twitch or the YouTube option is just better. <laughs> I I don't know what what the reason for that, um, but yeah. G give it a shot on both and just see you know wh what is your preference and like how do how do the viewers feel about the, the different uh, websites I think also um, the creative section on YouTube is uh, it's cool it, it came recently and I quite like that because uh, before there was like I don't think you're even allowed to stream anything other than games uh, so it's pretty nice that they added that. <laughs> Which champions have you worked on? Uh, nothing that's out yet. But once they announce, I'll, I'll be sure to say. 
did you feel uh, Ate, did you ever feel like you weren't improving when you were self-teaching I'm self-taught I feel sometimes I'm just hitting a brick wall yeah man like I think the first year for me was just absolute disaster like I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> I still a lot of time I have no clue what I'm doing but uh, particularly that first year it was like what the fuck <laughs> I see all this incredible art and it's like when I draw it it just looks it just looks wrong you know it doesn't look like the way I think it's supposed to look and it's like eventually I was like oh you know perspective <laughs> really helps you know and like the more you paint the more you discover these like uh, basics of art um, which is not not clear to you when you self-taught you know like uh, Especially, like, I was using a forum uh, at the time, so that helped in that aspect, you know, people like, Hey man, why why are you trying to draw characters when you don't know anatomy? Go look at anatomy. It's like, oh, that's a great suggestion, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, I don't know if there's any forum community that's really active now. Uh, but yeah, because like, there is, um, you know, there's only so much basic knowledge of art until you can start painting your own things uh, and then it comes down to like how do you interpret what is your vision of things uh, you know how do how do let me just check your name uh, so I say it correct how's Ethan's vision of creating a robot you know what makes it unique and once you have those basic knowledge of art uh, you'll be able to make those visuals reality but it is it is super frustrating when you're learning on your own uh, you just have to grind it out um, and whenever I felt like, um, you know, that you're not gaining anything, I, w I always try to, I even do it now. Like I, I try to look back and look at my work and look at, uh, what kind of work I'm doing and like thinking like, am I, am I, try am I too afraid to try out some, something new or am I just, you know, um, what 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 is stopping me and in most cases for me it's been just afraid to try new stuff out uh, and just like not willing to tackle the problems uh, but uh, yeah just gotta be honest with yourself i think and you'll you'll find what how to tackle it uh, hey c c how do you stay motivated and draw every day for a whole year um I, I think it's just being stubborn, you know, like I, I love art uh, and for me, I could, I, I thought to myself, like uh, when I commit to something, I'll, I'll f fulfill, I'll go through it. Uh, and the goal was when I started to do it for one year, like, you know, there's not a single excuse that you can come up with that is going to stop you from drawing, you know, it's two hours every day, you know. It doesn't matter what you do, you're going to be able to still do that. Um, so, after a while, you know, you kind of, you know, sometimes you're like, man, I have no idea. This is going to be terrible. Um, but after a while, it becomes more routine. You start to, like, pay attention to things that you can use as your ideas, you know. I started paying more attention to my surrounding. <coughs> you know, like, interact, like, reading stuff online would directly inspire the painting later on. So, the only thing that was kind of difficult was that I was working full time at the same time. Uh, so, you know, it was sometimes draining to just try to do that after work every single day. Especially when it was like a rough day of work, we had to do a lot of work and maybe it was a difficult assignment. <laughs> I'm glad you like the music. Uh, it's just some piano music I found on YouTube. Just check how long the stream has been going. Uh, okay, 
Almost two hours. Are there good art groups on Discord and Facebook? There are good groups on uh, Discord and Facebook, and such as Draw or Die. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like. Uh, I think especially when you're learning on your own, being around like other people trying to practice on their own, I think that could be just super helpful. Because it's stressful as well on, you know, outside of trying to learn art, it's stressful for, on you as a person. Because maybe, you know, maybe you don't have a job or maybe you work in a full-time job, which is really draining. And then you want to try get away from that. So it's like a lot of draining uh, on you as a person. So being around other artists who are kind of going through the same thing, it's just, you know, it's just super helpful. I think I'm getting closer and closer to where I can turn off the drawing. Uh, as you can see, it's still it's it's not holding as much weight as before. Um, still a few things uh, I need to block out. <coughs> problem Ethan. Just keep chipping away at it. The stream, I don't think it'll be saved for later, uh, but I'll, I'm, I'm probably going to keep streaming more regularly. Um, pretty pretty excited with how the YouTube uh, streaming service works. Interface is just great and it feels like the quality is higher for you as a viewer. Uh, so probably going to gonna try every weekend to stream a bit. Uh, maybe even tomorrow, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll continue on this painting. But um, So... Just keep an eye out for, for next stream. Um, so you only use the hard, uh, the round brush tool. Yeah, uh, let me actually show you. Let me show you why I'm using the hard round brush. Um, so this was like um, a painting I did last weekend. For It's for my personal project as well. Um, is it going to load? Where I was experimenting with just using the hard round brush. Um, and I kind of like, you know, the slightly graphical look mixed with the stylized look. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm using the, the hard round brush again. Because uh, I, I like the, the visual look of that.
Actually, I just want to test something. Uh, let me just see. How do I hide that? Right. Let's just try and see uh, how it could look. Even though it's still not finished. Uh, just with the colors, if we can capture the, the feel that I was going for in the animation. Uh, where does it start? I think it's here. Okay, let's copy over. Ooh, this is gonna be messy. <laughs> Man, Photoshop is not great for animating. Um, Let's just do it like this. <laughs> oh god. Uh, let me just duplicate this. Or Hey Ate, thanks for doing the awesome streaming. Do you have any tip for picking color for shadow? Uh, like a red ball is being hit by sunlight, both are warm colors. What would you pick for shadow? Um, well, it depends, you know, what's the what's the surrounding of the red sphere, you know? Is it is it stuck in, is there concrete underneath it? And, you know, the shadow is going to get a bit of bounce light from the blue concrete. It's also like, how strong is the light? How reflective is the ball? Is it, is it very reflective or is it not reflective? It's all really rel uh, relative to uh, the surrounding of the image. So let's see. I think it needs to be... Actually... I'll do it later. It's gonna be too too painful <laughs> fixing all the layers. Photoshop is so damn terrible for animating stuff. Uh, I'll try it out <laughs> later. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my brother is a good traditional painter. He knows anatomy, colors, values, but he's getting refused after test uh, after test works again and again. Can you help him? <clears throat> Well, um, cause like, you know, depends what he is applying for. If you're applying for a studio as a concept artist, um, working as a traditional artist, um, sometimes is not really ideal for the work situation because like, uh, most of the time, you know, unless you have a lot of incredible experience traditional, it's easier to work digitally uh, and try out ideas which could be very difficult as traditional but for instance if he is, if he's applying for a company that um, has a very realistic look to their work then you know working traditionally is not really going to help them uh, because they kind of have a very specific thing they're going for maybe for a tabletop games if he applies for that you know they might enjoy the more traditional look to their work. So uh, it depends where he's applying. You just got to be conscious of, uh, you know, building your portfolio around that. Actually. So I hope that helps your brother. <coughs> Um, awesome, thanks for responding. I downloaded your free 365 art book. Uh, uh, on your other works, do you only use the hard round brush as well? No, it's actually something I recently started experimenting with. Um, so, it's just uh, trial and error. I think that YouTube saves streams for later. Yeah, I think so. Streaming 365 days on YouTube? I, I don't think I can do that. Uh, TV paint? I'm gonna check that out for animating. Uh, oh. I missed a few, I think. Uh, 
Uh, how do you go about making hard edges with normal round? Um, so I like using lasso tool for that. Um, it's it's pretty pretty awesome because um, like painting like a hard edge like this uh, is that the lasso tool? It's possible, but it it's very hard and lasso tool is just very convenient. Um, Do you find it easier to try and fix a painting or start over? Um, well, <laughs> depends how much you have to fix the painting. <laughs> uh, sometimes I feel like it's a lost cause. <laughs> and like, ah, uh, abandon ship and, and just start over. Uh, sometimes it's doable, you know, it's, there's not so much, uh, you know, you can salvage it. Uh, but other times it's like, nah, man. <laughs> There is no way this is gonna work. Doesn't matter how much uh, I, <laughs> I I paint there. Uh, I fix it. Uh, how long have you worked at Riot? Uh, I've been with Riot for more than two years, so it's qu quite a while. But I wor was working remotely for. I was a freelancer for a year, uh, and then I did. Oh wait, I've been more than two years. I think two and a half, actually. Because I was freelancer for one year, and I worked remotely for one year full-time, and then I worked full-time on-site. Now I've been working for more than six months. So so it's more than two years. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, should practice to improve uh, a choosing color schemes when painting environments do you have any advice um, I think probably like the best advice I can give is paint from life if you can um, because like uh, you know a lot of the times especially when painting environments you have to suggest shapes uh, rather than actually paint them um, because it's, it's often such a big scene. Uh, so just painting from life, trying to suggest things, uh, but also doing, you know, maybe tighter line drawings could be a good practice. Oh, which, which studio used to work? Did you used to work at Max? Mac? Getting distracted from the painting a bit. <laughs> Let me see how long the stream has been going. Okay. I just love the work uh, the people I work with are just like super super nice and you can just you can just go to people in other teams like uh, there is uh, an artist in particular which is like uh, you know I can he's super talented at creating like illustrations um, and I can just go to him and like hey man <laughs> could you give me some feedback on this and it's just super helpful uh, which is incredible you know it's a big company so there's a lot of artists but you can just go over to someone if you feel like, uh, if they have time and they could help, uh, which is pretty great. Just sharing the knowledge. Oh yeah, Virgil, Virgil James and Obsidian. Yeah, I think I've heard a lot of people are from there. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's 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 a really great working environment. Um, I'm very glad to be to be here. I worked before at an outsource studio. Um, like my coworkers, uh, they were just incredible. But as a career and growing as an artist, there was just, uh, it was very difficult. So um, it's a huge shift compared to how Riot uh, is, which is, which is really great. Uh, what is your favorite type of studies for improving and painting skills in general? Uh, for me, I just I just love painting from life. You know, that is like my go-to thing uh, for improving. Um, and I started doing it a lot more traditionally. I used to do it, uh, a lot of digital studies before, uh, but I've been shifting away from that. Um, I do still do digital studies, but I do daily uh, gouache paintings. Uh, let me actually pop it up here. Um, so I'm, I'm still struggling a lot with, uh, with the medium. Uh, I don't know how big this will be on the screen, but... So this is just painting from life with gouache. I try to do this every day. Um, this one was done in Stockholm in particular during the Christmas holiday. Uh, but it's something I try to do every day. Um, and I, I struggle a lot. <laughs> Many of the times it just goes uh, goes into disaster, <laughs> but it's it's fun. Uh, but that is the best exercise, in my opinion. Thanks for the advice. No problem. As a digital artist, do you carry on a portable Cintiq in order to paint from life? Uh, hey, Ethan. I forgot to say that. How's it going, man? Um, no, I, I carry around with me actually wherever I go, like a tiny sketchbook um, and an ink pen or uh, or a brush pen. Uh, and I always sketch, you know, like I like part of my morning routine at work is, you know, I go in, I drop off my jacket, my bag at my desk, and then I go for a cappuccino because we have a cafeteria. Um, and I just sit and sketch because normally getting a cappuccino takes like two, 20, eh, 15 to 20 minutes because there's often a lot of people in the morning uh, and I just sit and sketch with my sketchbook um, I, I whenever I can I try to sketch uh, traditionally when practicing because I feel like uh, I pay more attention than if I were doing it digitally does concept art take <laughs> take someone's soul is it worth it well <laughs> That depends. <laughs> it can be uh, draining sometimes. Um, but um, at the end of the day, like, you have to love art to make it as a living. Uh, for me, it's just, you know, when, when I'm not working, when I'm not drawing for work, I'm just drawing for myself. And I'm, when I'm working, I'm just drawing. It's just something I always love, you know. Like I said, I just carry a sketchbook with me wherever I go. Uh, it's just something I truly love. Uh, sometimes it is difficult to create concept art, uh, but that's part of the job, you know? Like, I think there's not a single job where there is not difficulties uh, that you have to deal with. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to hit a particular vision, um, but yeah, um, I love it, you know? And I, I can't see myself doing anything other than drawing. <clears throat> I was actually studying to be a lawyer, uh, or law. I was part. I was going to law school. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, good thing I quit that. Um, do you have any advice for learning perspective for concept artwork? I would just study perspective. Um, I'm sure if you just Google perspective tutorial on YouTube you'll encounter a lot um, 
there's plenty of resources. You know, you can go to the library and borrow a book on architecture or something. Yeah, thanks, Mysterian SVN. I, tr I try to sketch as much as I can from life. Uh, I, I love sketching people as well from life. You know, when I'm waiting for my coffee or something. But you got to be careful to not be creepy when you're looking at someone that's sketching. Because people might, <laughs> might feel it's uncomfortable. Uh, but it's super fun, you know. like, Because most people don't stand still very long, you know. Maybe sometimes they're checking their phone or something. Uh, so you just have to quickly capture the gesture, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so I think, I think I'm gonna round out the, <laughs> yeah, sun <laughs> sunglasses would, <laughs> would be great. <laughs> Not creepy at all, sitting inside with sunglasses. <laughs> uh, let me just finish the last question. I have a problem doing work for a long time. I prefer stylized fast illustration. Do you think, th uh, do you think it's work for me out there? All concept work seems very complex. Um, yeah, I mean, just just paint, paint what you love, paint in the style that you love, and I'm sure something is gonna work out uh, eventually. Just gotta push, paint on what you're excited about, and not what you think people want to see, uh, and things will work out. Um, so I'm probably gonna round off the stream. Uh, I'm getting a bit tired from standing up all the time. Um, but uh, again I hope you guys enjoyed the stream it was the first time trying it out on YouTube so I hope it was a positive experience as well um, so thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to piano music and just chatting and I hope I answered some questions that help clarify a few things uh, so be sure to subscribe uh, so you see you next time I go online if you're interested um, regardless I wish you have a pleasant Sunday evening or Sunday morning uh, regardless of where you live so have a good one and thanks again for hanging out